Hello everyone, and welcome to a special episode of BD100, where we delve deep into the extraordinary stories of women engineers who have made indelible marks on history, and continue to shape the future. I'm Lynn. And I'm Nina. And I'm Sarah. Today we have the privilege of exploring the fascinating journeys of women engineers, from historical trailblazers to contemporary leaders. We will be uncovering their remarkable achievements and discussing the crucial role of diversity and inclusion in engineering. Let's start by revisiting some of the remarkable figures we discussed in our introduction. Emily Warren Roebling, for instance, played a pivotal role in the construction of the Brooklyn Bridge. Can you share more about her extraordinary contributions? Absolutely, Lynn. Emily's story is one of resilience and determination. Despite not having formal education in engineering, she managed the construction of the Brooklyn Bridge while serving as a liaison between the engineering team and her husband, the project's uh, chief engineer. Emily's dedication and proficiency in construction management were unparalleled, and she proved herself to be a force to be reckoned with in a male-dominated field. Her involvement in the project was more than administrative. She became deeply knowledgeable about the intricacies of bridge construction, mastering the technical aspects to ensure the project's success. Emily even stepped up to deliver lectures on the bridge construction techniques, dispelling doubts about her capabilities. Indeed, Emily's leadership and expertise were instrumental in the completion of one of the most iconic landmarks in American history. Her legacy continues to inspire women in engineering around the world. Moving on to another iconic feature, Julia Morgan, California's first licensed woman architect. How did her groundbreaking work pave the way for women in engineering? Julia Morgan's architectural achievements were truly groundbreaking. She designed the historic Hearst Castle and nearly 800 projects in California and Hawaii over her career. Her success as a woman in a traditionally male-dominated profession inspired countless aspiring engineers and architects. Beyond her architectural brilliance, Julia Morgan was a trailblazer in navigating the complexities of professional practice as a woman. She faced discrimination and skepticism, but with unwavering determination ultimately leading an indelible mark on the architectural landscape of California. Julia's commitment to her craft and her resilience in the face of adversity serve as a shining example of women in engineering, demonstrating that passion and perseverance can overcome any obstacle. Now let's shift our focus to more recent history. Marilyn Jorgensen Rees and Lois Cooper made significant strides in the engineering profession. Can you elaborate on their contributions and the challenges they confronted? Marilyn Jorgensen Reese broke barriers as one of the first registered civil engineers in California. She designed one of the most iconic freeway interchanges in Los Angeles and left a lasting impact on transportation infrastructure. Despite facing gender bias and limited opportunities for women in engineering, Marilyn blazed a trail for future generations with her groundbreaking projects and unwavering determination. Her success serves as a testament to the resilience and talent of women in engineering. Similarly, Lois Cooper faced many barriers as a black female engineer in the 20th century. Despite the challenges, she became the second woman in California to pass the professional engineer license exam and worked her way up to become a transportation engineer and project manager. Lois's journey is a testament to her resilience and determination to succeed in a field where women and minorities were often marginalized. Her pioneering efforts not only broke barriers, but also paved the way for greater diversity and inclusion in the engineering profession. It would be three more decades before women ascended to leadership roles in bridge design. Shannon Hardy Post broke new ground as the first female bridge design brand chief, later assuming the role of office chief in the 1980s. Subsequently, Sue Hida served as assistant state bridge engineer, contributing her expertise for over 30 years at Caltrans. 
We can find exemplary women in the pages of Caltrans history, but there are inspiring role models all around us blazing new trails, even today. Caltrans district directors Dina El Tawansi, Gloria Roberts, D Diana Gomez, Lanzu, uh, manage the transportation network in some of the largest and most dynamic regions of our state, including the Bay Area, Los Angeles, Orange County, and part of the Central Valley. Also, women engineers with deep knowledge of their specialty areas lead teams of technical experts such as Janice Benton directing the Division of Design. Nina Choi, spearheading the DES team of geotechnical services, and Ruth Fernandez, leading structures and engineering services. And that brings us to you, Mina, as one of the current office chiefs in Bridge Design alongside Tracy Menard and Krista Ziegenthaler. You are also a role model to aspiring women in the structural engineering field. How do you reflect on your time at Caltrans and at DES? As a woman working in the transportation engineering industry, I'm very proud to work at Caltrans, an organization that values its employees and focuses on safety, equity, and innovation. DES is an inclusive work environment that empowers women to gain equal opportunity in the workplace and reap the benefits of diversity and gender equity. Caltrans also offer networking and mentoring opportunities through its Women's Opportunity to Empower and Network, aka Women Group. Lest we forget, there are other notable women in Caltrans who deserve mention. Ann Fox is currently the Acting Deputy for Planning and Modal Programs. Christy Connors is the District 8 Deputy in Construction and a trailblazer in the field. Carla Sutliff, who previously held the position of Chief Engineer, was a mentor to our current Chief Engineer, Donna Berry. Additionally, Grace Magzayo is the Acting District 10 Director. Before we conclude, let's take a moment to honor Donna Berry, the first African-American woman to serve as Chief Engineer at Caltrans. Donna's leadership and dedication paved the way for countless women in engineering, and her legacy continues to inspire us all. Absolutely, Lee. Donna's groundbreaking achievements are a testament to the incredible talent and resilience of women in engineering. Her leadership at Caltrans set a new standard for excellence and diversity in the field. As we honor Donna and the accomplishments of women engineers worldwide, let's reaffirm our commitment to forging a future that is inclusive and equitable for all. As we conclude this episode, we're left with an important question. What are your thoughts on the inspiring stories of women engineers we've explored today? How do you envision the future of engineering being shaped by diversity and inclusion? We'd love to hear your insights and reflections. Until next time, we encourage you to continue the conversation and share your perspectives. This is BD100, signing off.